Top of the hour on a Friday. J.P. Morosi back with Not us. Not sleeping on the sweater either, man. It, That's it, nice. It is nice. Nice sweater. And to talk about nice defenses, J.P. has ranked the best Ian Field defensive units in the game. Appropriate, J.P., as we're counting down the top 100 players on the network currently. You're talking about units here, groups. Take it away. Yes, Matt and Bill, and I also rank as the most likely MLB Network broadcaster to wear an Argyle sweater on the air. Just sort of <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> so uh, with no further ado, the number five team in the best infield defenses in Major League Baseball, the Arizona Diamondbacks, a team that we don't give enough credit to, I believe, for how much they've improved. They're just in a tough division right now. I think Walker is a very underrated defensive first baseman. Cattell Marte, as we saw earlier, likely to be the, the second baseman for the Dominican Republic. Uh, you consider Rojas as a really good defensive profile. At shortstop, Nick Ahmed, I still believe one of the very best defensive shortstops in the sport. So again, the Diamondbacks continuing to improve with Tori Lovello there as the manager. They are number five on my list. Number four, I'm going to stay in the National League West, a team that's had a bit of a, a, a remake of their infield uh, with the arrival of Xander Bogarts. And let's be honest, guys, you think about Bogarts and Manny Machado on the left side. How could you do much better than that uh, on both sides of the baseball? Ha Song Kim can play now on the right side. Uh, Jake Cronenworth, the very versatile player, of course. And why wouldn't he be? He's a, a two-sport athlete growing up in the great state of Michigan. So I, I like the way the Padres fit right now in terms of being the fourth best team in terms of infield defense in the major leagues. Now, going back to the number three spot, the Cleveland Guardians. The youngest team in baseball this past year, also one of the most athletic for my money, especially on the infield. You think about Andres Jimenez, he will likely play shortstop for Team Venezuela at the World Baseball Classic, but he's playing second base on this team because you've got Ahmed Rosario playing short. I still believe Jose Ramirez could basically play anywhere on the infield and be an MVP level defender. Of course, they've got Josh Bell now arriving to play first base. He continues to approve on the defensive side of the ball now for manager Terry Francona. The number two, the second best defensive infield in the major leagues, the New York Yankees. Still a great depth of talent in their infield right now. Uh, they're potentially adding in some more talent. We saw Oswaldo Cabrera. He could now play infield there depending on where he's most needed for the Yankees. Oswald Peraza as well. I really like the way he played, especially under some pressure situations there in the postseason. I really like Peraza's potential. At some point, they'll have Volpe there. Uh, still, Glaber Torres is an option. They've got DJ LeMahieu to move around. Anthony Rizzo still one of the very best defensive first basemen in the major leagues. Now, the number one best defensive infield you got to love the St. Louis Cardinals. They've got a, a pair of MVP players on both sides of the ball on the corners, the pillars of the organization. Paul Goldschmidt, Nolan Arenado, then up the middle, Tommy Edmond now moves over to shortstop. Of course, when they need him, they can still bring Paul DeYoung back. Uh, they've got Donovan to play some second base. They've got Nolan Gorman there as well. So both because of the depth, and the talent, Bill, I love the way the Cardinals play defense. And now for the, the further examination of my list, and I welcome all scrutiny to the great <laughs> Bill Ripken. Well, I'm not going to throw scrutiny at you because I applaud the uh, number one team, the uh, Cardinals, in that mix. And I had a conversation with Keith Costas being the uh, resident Cardinal fan uh, and savant as far as that club goes. But here's the thing, too, because for some reason – in this world of uh, measuring this, measuring that, we place first base at a very low, like, defensive value. And I'd like to point back, when the Cardinals went out there and got Paul Goldschmidt, the year before they got him, they led the planet in making errors. The year after they got him, for one year, they led the planet in least amount of errors. And it was basically the first baseman that came into play. And truly, when you're in this mix, uh, Keith, if I can bring you in, he was the only one from outside that group that came in. And when you post 160 times like he does and plays first base really well, the first baseman at all levels of baseball, if you think about it, truly has the ability to make the second baseman, shortstop, and third baseman better being able to handle the bag. And Keith, am I wrong with he was the only outsider coming into the group? 
Yeah, I mean, they had some moving parts. Tommy Edmond made his debut that year, but he was an internal promotion guy. So he was really the big change. And I agree with you, Bill. If you look at some of these advanced metrics, he's been worth 12 defensive runs saved for his entire tenure with the Cardinals. That's about half of what the league leader in a given season usually has. And that just does not stack up to me for all the reasons you just said. He transformed the entire defense this past year. His defensive metrics were particularly low. Didn't really line up with the eye test watching the team every day for me. So I agree with you. He completely transformed the entire look of the team defensively, let alone what he does as an MVP caliber offensive player. Yeah, JP, where, where was Atlanta in your thought process? Would Did the Swanson thing with him leave him? Because there's part of this when you talked about the overall defensive unit. I will still go to my grave saying – um, I don't want multiple people playing multiple positions because I think the only way to put your best foot forward truly defensively as a unit is have familiarity and consistency throughout the diamond. And a team like Atlanta, if Albies didn't get hurt, those four guys play 160 games a year and they can all flash the leather. So I like the consistency that goes on uh, as far as an infield unit goes. I had them at number six, and it was a tough call for me, D-backs and Braves. I'm going with the D-backs and the, and the continuity and consistency with Nick Ahmed versus the unknown and Vaughn Grissom. I, I believe that he can handle it, but we don't know yet. Uh, he hasn't done it yet for 162. He's, he's worked tirelessly already this offseason with Ron Washington. I believe that Vaughn Grissom is going to prove it, but he has to prove it. And, and to your point, you look at third base, Riley, I think, really profiles well defensively. Olsen, I believe, is, is a well above average first baseman. And Albies, to your point, when he's when he's healthy and available, is, is one of the very best defensive second basemen. I also think that, Bill, everything you said about Goldschmidt and the Cardinals also applies to Rizzo and the Yankees. Great athlete. We know how well he defends the bunt as well. Uh, the athleticism that he brings, a great target at first base. And, and this now, and for me, Bill, I, I'm going to really want to check back with you during the course of the year, just in talking about the game that we love, about how athleticism, durability, and range are going to now come into play without the shift. Because you want to have a shortstop and second baseman in particular who have range. We, we've seen for a long time the shift and the ability to reposition players has really allowed second basemen in particular who don't have a ton of range to stay in the game and play that position longer and longer. You can't fall back on that anymore. And so now it is it is the domain of the athletes and the guys that stay on the field. And I think we're going to have, a by about the middle part of this year, a real truth test as to who the truly great, rangy, athletic middle, middle infielders are. Yep, a lot of good points there, man. Goldschmidt made the Cardinals better. Rizzo made the Yankees Frank better. Rizzo. No, no, Anthony Rizzo made the Cardinals better. JP, thank you. Good stuff. <laughs> <laughs>